All right, guys, we got our H15 here. Everything came put together. It had hydraulic fluid, it had oil in the engine. <clears throat> didn't have much gas. The thumb and everything was already on there. Didn't have to do anything, just unwrap it and start it up. Now, running it, it did get really hot just initially, so I got all these other things we're gonna try and put on here. We'll follow that up in a new one. We have a fan, we have a positive bus block, a negative bus block, a little holder for a temperature gauge, switches for fan, oil cooler fan, which is right over here. And then we have our new oil filter, and then we have relays as well. So we're gonna try and get all that put on, but one of the first things we gotta do is take some of this out and find out what fittings we need for the hydraulic. Let's have some fun. All right, guys, I just got back, or I did yesterday anyway, from the hydraulic shop. And this H15 does have those weird connectors that the garage connection talks about. I'll link his video on, but it is a, like an M26 connector with M27 threads or something like that. And it, they could not find one that fit. And this is a big hydraulic shop. Um, and what they ended up doing is I took the hose that went from the pump to the tank and they actually cut the connectors off the inside of them and then recrimped them down on one hose here that goes to the filter and a cooler. And then they have another connector that comes out of here that goes into the pump. And so when they cut that hose, that came with the machine. They put one end on this long hose. It goes back to the tank and they put the other one that goes from the filter to the pump so we'll put all that all together and we'll show you guys all right guys we're all finished hooking all the hoses and tightening everything up we have the oil cooler right here the fins should be right about here air is blowing out towards me and that is so that it's sucking air out this way and we can clean off this radiator if it gets dirty. We have the bottom lip just between, sandwich between the, this metal and this one. And then we have some half inch bolts up here at the top. This goes from the pump back around here to the output of the filter, or excuse me, the cooler. The cooler then goes up to the filter and then back around to this nice long hose that goes back around this way and all the way over to the hydraulic tank. All right, guys, next step is done. I got a negative bus bar right here and a positive here. And this one actually shows lights on it. So when you put the fuses in right here, we'll see it. So we should come in here and then down here, I believe, to get power, we'll double check that. And the negative, I'm just gonna run from the shutoff switch so we'll have a cable coming from the back of this over here so when we turn this off power's cut to everything and i'll run to the battery up here on top it's kind of smaller studs than i wanted but uh it's rated for 30 amps so we'll run with it so next we do the wiring all right guys so just checking back in i've got a negative bus bar here Positive one here with fuses built in. This wire goes down and under to the battery right there. And then with the negative, I was gonna run it to the shutoff, but the shutoff actually only runs ground to the, the chassis right here. So I just ran my negative to right there. Um, now I'm gonna go through and put this side panel on, put my fan on and put these switches in right here for this fan that's going to go on this side, this fan, and then we have voltage. All right, guys, we got a lot done here. We got our negative bus bar, positive bus bar. It has fuses in there. Right now, I just have a 20 amp feeding both these nightlight switches and a little voltmeter. We turn the power on. We can see our battery voltage, and then this will be our oil cooler fan, which is not working, I gotta look at that. And then our fan on this side. Pulling 
power. So when those guys are tied, the negative bus bar is tied into this switch. So when we turn that off, there we go, everything turns off. Um, this oil cooler is all in Chinese. I tried wiring it. I'm going to try a few different things and see what I can figure out. The other thing that is not working for me is that this is supposed to be a 1 8 NPT, um, but the temperature sensor that I have is not fitting. So we got to get, figure out what's going on there. Stay tuned. Hey guys, I struggled with this for a little bit, many times actually, trying to get the right pins for the fan on this oil cooler. It has a four pin DIN, that's what it's called, you can Google it. Uh, this one right here is our, we're gonna use for our, kind of like our gauge. To one side is the negative, and to the other side is a positive. So this piece negative, the one on the bottom here positive. And you can also, what I ended up having to do is take out this top piece and we can see in here what two pins are being used and there's a black and a red wire so you can see which positive negative goes where. And it works now. All right guys, now that we have our wiring done over there for our fan, we're left with the last piece, which I've been thinking about trying to figure out how to do and that's to get that hydraulic temperature sensor in there. And what I've decided to do was to go ahead and drill a hole in the side of the hydraulic tank and then put one of these guys in. And I was going to do it with what they call one of these bulkhead fittings. And so it looks like this. And then you can put an O-ring on it. And then one of these tooth washers and then put that on the inside so that you end up with something like this. And then this is a 1 8 NPT hole, which I can then screw in the sensor to. Really didn't wanna get into the tank and I was really concerned about how am I gonna get down here and hold that nut on the inside. And when I pulled this apart, I noticed this top piece comes out. And for my hands, they're big enough to get in there so I can actually hold a wrench down on there and make it get it water tight or oil tight for that matter. So here we go. All right guys, this worked out really well. We have that connector right there with the 1 8 MPT. All right, I went slow. We did get a lot of shavings obviously from the metal, but down in the tank, I could fit my hand down in there pretty well. You see there's the connector. There are one or two metal shavings down in there, but not bad at all. There's actually a filter down in there. And then I haven't looked up this Japanese yet, but I think that's a filter. And then I also added my own filter. So we shouldn't have any problems with any metal shavings. But now we're gonna put this back on, hook up the electrical. And I think I'm gonna put that gauge right here or maybe right here. All right. We got our wiring done, I turned the power on. This is what's cool about having the negative and the positive bus bar though. This unit, these are all negatives down here so you could just use those. I didn't pay attention when I bought it and I got the other one too. But it's nice because it has a light there showing the fuse is blown or that the circuit's not complete. And so all we gotta do is take a fuse. I'm just putting a five amp in here. Oh, shoot, I just bent that sucker. Hold on. Okay, I used two hands not to break it. And now we have our temperature gauge. And hopefully it works, I don't know. Um, so we got that down there, right there. Wired up, wiring's a little dirty because I don't know where I'm gonna end up putting this just yet. Wasn't sure how bright it was gonna be. You know, maybe it's here, maybe it's over there. So I'll figure out the best place after maybe I use it. I'll just I'm put it on here, it comes with a sticker and then we'll go from there. Now we just put everything back together and we're all done. And then I left the hole off over here because I had to drain all the fluid out to get the hole in. I'm gonna leave that off and pour all the fluid back in. It makes it a lot easier than that little itty bitty hole. So you guys take care. I hope this helped out. That's just about everything, right? Negative bus bar, positive bus bar, temperature, oil cooler, um, 
filter and then you don't have it right there because I already have the side off but then another fan right here oil and the cooler fan are switched so that you don't have it and we have a voltage meter and it also pops off for I'll leave it for USB if you needed it for some reason take care guys oh one other thing sorry I forgot I did replace all these Zerks on here as well with little ones uh, these are all eight millimeter I want to say one two three four five six seven eight probably at least ten because I'm not remembering some of them have regular ones some didn't but you need at least ten and they're eight millimeter I did buy the packs from like Amazon of course they just had six millimeter and ten millimeter so that was before I knew the right size all right now you guys can take care have a good one hopefully it helped you out